It's Monday, March 18th. Zach, what's on the show today? We've got a great show for you out there. Uh, Tom Farmer is hanging out with us talking about the Frankfurt Flag Initiative. And then we'll also have a segment from the library. It's called an app for that. So that'll be pretty fun. All right, let's start the show. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Around 10 Frankfurt's Morning Show. I'm Scott Stafford, and Zach Hubbard is right over there. Good morning, Zach. Hey, good morning, Scott. How you doing? Doing all right. How was your weekend? Uh, weekend was actually pretty good. Uh, went on Saturday, did a bunch of stuff in downtown Frankfurt. So it was fun to kind of do. Um, go, went to a few places, went to an engine house, went yeah. to SIG, went mm-hmm. to uh, Goodwood. And then also went to Mortimer Bibbs and Dicey Riley's. So we were like all over the St. Clair and Main Street and uh, Miro Street kind of area. It was fun. It was fun to see people walking around like all day, taking part in um, uh, festivities for the yeah. St. Patrick's Day weekend. And um, just seeing people out because it was a beautiful day on Saturday. Too. It's a real nice weekend. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was supposed to be colder than it ended up being. But yeah, it was actually pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, it turned out really, really nice. It was cool. Um, also, I saw, Scott, on uh, St. Clair, uh, it used to be Trifecta Barbecue um, up until, I guess, last year or the year before. Um, and somebody's trying to open up a like record store right there on St. Clair next to Mortimer That's, Bibbs. Uh, yeah, it's like a record store, and then I think they're going to have some... Uh, accessories like and uh, musical instruments and things like that. Um, well, we like they're, they're, they're in the process. I saw I saw the guy and they're measuring and then they're they're okay. they're working on it. And it's coming soon. But they had some stuff on the wall that they were gonna say that uh, and just letting people know that that they were gonna come in here soon. So I'm excited about that. I've always wanted a, a record store, like a legit record store here in Frankfurt. So. Yeah, I mean, nobody's going to be more excited about it than you are. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, they, when you were passing by the window, they were like, yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, they could, they, <laughs> they could the, tell, like, hey, yeah. I'm the mark. I'm the guy. I'm going to be here. So, uh, no, it was fun. It was very fun, though, to just see Frankfurt, um, see people there in downtown Frankfurt and join, join the weekend. Um, so, uh, March Madness. Mm-hmm. Starts uh, well, if you count the uh, uh, conference tournaments, it's already mm-hmm. started. But mm-hmm. the the NCAA tournament proper gets going this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, Kentucky got their draw. Yep. Uh, they flamed out in the SEC tournament mm-hmm. in the first game. Uh, uh-huh. I've got plenty of thoughts on that, but I'm not going to share them today. <laughs> And <laughs> where we, we got stuff to do because mm-hmm. I could rail on that. And it was just oh, it was it was pathetic. Let's put it that way. But uh, they got their draw and they got a good draw. Uh, they got a three seed. OK. Yeah. Um, not anybody you're really too scared of in, uh, mm-hmm. in, in our bracket other than Texas A&M, which, you know, if you plan it, managed to play them for a third time, it's tough to beat somebody three times. So, yeah, you know, maybe. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but you never know because it seems like every time we get a good draw, we play terrible and then we get really hard draws and we play well. So who knows? But, uh, are you excited about the tournament at all? Um, uh, I'm excited cause I like tournament basketball. Yeah. And I think that I don't really watch much college basketball during the regular season. I check in here and there and especially when L is not doing great, but, um, which they didn't this past year, but uh, I, I do love like a tournament. I don't know mm-hmm. why, but I do love tournament basketball yeah, and like having right. these games on like all day on oh, like, the Thursday, Friday, yeah. and it and is the, Saturday, the best sporting Sunday. event of, of oh, all. It's just incredible. Yeah, yeah, even if you don't love it, it's just fun to get involved and yeah. kind of watch some of these games. But, yeah, but that actually is in our question of the day here in just a little bit. So maybe we put it a is. pin in. You know, yeah. let's put a pin in that. We'll come right back to it yeah. real quick. Uh, did you see? Did, did you hear anything about a, a cougar attack in Seattle? In Seattle? No. Yeah. So uh, right there. So um, uh, last month, uh, Carrie Bergeret, uh spent five days in the hospital uh, because she got attacked by a cougar. Uh, but she would have died. Yeah. No question if it weren't for her friends. Uh, so a group of ladies out riding their bikes in Seattle. Um, two, they're, they're on bike trails out by a creek. 
two cougars run out of nowhere. Uh-huh. Uh, one of them tackles Carrie, uh, yeah. knocks, her, knocks her off her bike, pins her down, latches on. Uh-huh. Uh, th- it sounds like three of the other ladies on their bikes go into action. Yeah. They get off their bikes. Uh, the quote from uh, one of the ladies is Erica and Tish come over with sticks and a rock and we're hand to hand combat <laughs> battling this thing. <laughs> Holy crap. I mean, can you imagine? You got to have like friends like that. Uh, man, that's just incredible. It like, is. That's, a, that's like such an endorsement for having like a, a yeah. solid group of friends like that that would fight off cougars. For that's <laughs> 75 pounds of teeth and yeah. claws. And uh, yeah. yeah, so for 15 minutes, they fought this oh thing. God. Um, while it's kind of like latched on to Carrie, they said, finally, uh, you know, they're fighting it so much and, and she's doing what she can. Uh, it, it loosens up its jaws. Mm -hmm. She's able to like get her head out of its jaws. Uh, Uh, and then they pin it down with, with the bicycle that you see right there. Okay. And, and, and just hold it there until like fish and wildlife comes. And they said, they said, is you know, the fish and wilds like just amazing. They're heroes. Like, there's no question she would have died. Like, yeah. and and that's what the lady, like Carrie, says. She's like, it had me. Like, and it was trying was to drag me away. Like, they, if they're not, if they don't fight it off, that that's it. That's the end. So, pretty unbelievable. That nice out, nice story there. Nice outcome. Yeah, <laughs> for that one. So just awesome. I mean, unbelievable. Like your yeah. friends go into action like that. So I got a question of the day for you. Zach. Oh, for me. Yeah. Okay. And if anybody else wants to answer it, they can. But what's the what's the biggest animal that you'd square up against? <sighs> if say a friend or loved one is oh. in danger, and only Zach can help. I uh, I don't know. I mean, I would probably get in there with just about any animal, to be honest with you. Like if I'm there with like a friend, and right, like family right. member, or whatever. Like yeah. I'm gonna try, even if it takes yeah. me out too. No, I totally get that, yeah. but. Say it's a like a grizzly bear. Like mm-hmm. you're not saying, "Come on, bear, let's let's go." You're like, you know, distract the bear, try oh, to sure. do whatever you can. Like right. it's not like okay. Yeah. But you mean like if you're like fisticuffs with something? If you got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I, don't I think know for me, it might be mean. cougars. Might be the limit. Might be there. Yeah. Like I'm still scared to death, uh-huh. but. Well, let's let people think about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what kind of animals they want to fight. Anyway, yeah, let's uh we, our question of the day though involves basketball. So It does. Maybe we should bring in our guests and see uh just to talk some of this stuff yeah, with us. Talk yeah. It out. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's do- All right. Uh, joining us, Tom Farmer. Uh, Tom's the chairperson uh, for the Frankfurt Flag Initiative. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. Thank you both for having me. I really appreciate you having me here. Yeah. Thanks so much for hanging out with us this morning. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk all things uh, flags and in particular the Frankfurt Flag Initiative here in just a second. But like Scott said, we do throw up a question of the day mm-hmm. for our viewers um, who are watching out there on Facebook. Let me ask you this. Yeah, but go, go right ahead. Uh, which... which question are, are do you lean into more what kind of animal you would fight or <laughs> or uh talk about uh tournament basketball lately i would probably lean more into the uh the animal question but <laughs> since i used to be a freelance journalist uh for espn louisville i covered um not men's, although I did occasionally as like a fill-in, but I covered uh, University of Louisville women's basketball okay. for yeah. three years. Nice. Uh, so uh, I unfortunately did not catch the selection shows, mm-hmm. uh, but I know that I think U of L women are sixth seed in the second region. Okay. So, that's right. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that I would I would mm-hmm. actually follow as uh, yeah. women's basketball. And they take on uh, I believe it's Middle Tennessee. In that first round game, and the thing that I remember people seeing and talking about, the one comment I saw on Twitter was, I think the next game they would play LSU, which is a bit of a like rivalry game with Louisville lately because of Haley Van Lith, who was the yeah. star at Louisville and Angel. jump ship, yeah. and went to went to LSU, and so I, I think yeah. there's a bit of a 
sure. their pencil in that second round game in. But you got to win the first game, of course. But yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so our question of the day, uh, I think pretty much probably anybody can answer, even if they're not super into basketball. Most people have done this. But our question of the day is, have you ever won a bracket challenge? Uh, yeah. So, so Tom, have you, do you have much experience in filling out the brackets? Does that sound anything you like to do? <laughs> uh, I, it's one of those things that if you're into sports, especially college basketball, yeah. Like um, this past weekend, you roll from St. Patty's Day, you have the last games of the men's tournaments, yeah. and then you go right into Selection Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's a tradition, you know, especially in Kentucky. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I love filling out brackets. It's just extremely fun. My favorite thing is my wife, who's not as big into sports, I always give her a bracket and just say, fill it out. We'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. And the years that she beats me, then it's <laughs> extremely embarrassing. Uh, but, yes, I actually not – first place but i did get second place in a bracket one time and i won a um, warm-up uh, a warm-up jacket for U of L basketball oh nice. cool nice. i was pretty happy about that are nice. you a, are you a multi-bracket guy because in the height of my sickness it was like you know i would have like four versions where it was like okay this is the upset bracket this is the chalk bracket this is the mixture of the two and this is the, everything just goes insane bracket mm -hmm. and like things like that or are you just a one i'm doing it once and this is it i usually like two i like yeah. I, I call it the gut bracket which is like yeah. I, I like, know this go. game. Yeah, yeah. I know that this guy's going to win. And then I call it the, it's actually not like the sensible bracket. It's more the random bracket. It's right. just like, okay, <laughs> yeah. pick the Chaos. one. The one that alphabetically comes first, just pick that one and then just do that. So I usually <laughs> okay. have those two brackets. Okay. And it doesn't usually work out well for yeah. me, but I try. Yeah. Um, Zach, what about you? Uh, no, I've never won one. I think I came close one time. Um, there was one year where, uh, you know, you alluded to the height of your sickness. There was one time where I was so into it <laughs> and I was on ESPN yeah. and I was watching like every single round for the picks. I was like watching their yeah. analysis and like really, <laughs> really dialed in, plugged yeah. in. And that was probably the worst, the worst bracket one. I've ever done. Always. So I was like, I will never do that again. I Always. wasted so much time on yeah, that. The yeah. The more you study it, inevitably for me too, like the more I learn about it, the worst, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the worse I do. And no, it's no question yeah. about it. Yeah. But, but I, 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 I I love uh, Tom, your, your wife's uh, uh, strategy there of just picking based on either mascot or like color or something like that, or like, oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Tennessee State, why not? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. just here, here's an upset. And it's like that team has never beaten this other team right. ever, or a yeah. 15 seed. And yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and, and until recently, you know, like, you know, 16 and never beaten a one and all those type of things. And, yeah. and 12s usually beat fives like that. That happens a lot. There's and usually the, at least two of those yeah. or three. Yeah. There's all the there's all the math. Um, all right. So if you're watching on Facebook, uh, let us know. Uh, have you ever won a bracket challenge? Uh, anything else you want to talk about the brackets that you noticed, you know, matchups, if you want to talk who you think will win the whole thing whatever uh there's there's a look at the bracket right there mm. it's kind of hurt me a little bit zach um when they these play-in games they've got now okay take a little bit out of the it's less clean on paper uh, oh i see yeah and and you got to wait until what thursday to like you know and, and like so am i gonna fill out am i picking that one like i don't want to i just want the 64 like just give me oh, yeah. the 64 and i want to pick those so that, but also like since Kentucky's been struggling the past few years, it's uh, it's also taken some of the fun out of it for me. I haven't I haven't touched a bracket for this will be three years if I don't fill one oh, out. Oh really? Yeah, and I just I don't do you want. Think you will this year? Or no? I kind of don't. Like yeah. I don't like like I just don't want to add any extra bad mojo to it. Like sure. I don't I don't know. It's just something where it's just <laughs> it's taking the fun out of it for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and if you aren't watching on Facebook, that's okay because we've got the text machine. Mm -hmm. uh, hit us on there, 502 353 023, just 0233. Uh, just pick up your phone, uh, text that number, and we will uh, get those answers and we can read them on air. And even mm. if you're not watching live, we'll right. see it later. Because we do have some, I know we have some responses um, to just a couple of episodes from last week because me and Kathy, uh, the show was, was so stuffed on Friday. Uh -huh. We weren't able to, to get to those responses. So I think we'll be able to read those out a little bit later on. Uh, okay. Um, well, 
I think, you know, we'll let those percolate. Yeah, let everybody yeah. think about it. Mm-hmm. If anybody wants to tell me what, what kind of animals they would like to fight, yeah. then that's I'm seeing, okay, I'm too. I'm seeing some of those in our responses already. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Uh, but, you know, uh, Tom's here to talk about real things. That's uh, right. So let's do that. Yeah, talk about the Frankfurt <laughs> Flag Initiative. You already mentioned that you were, um, uh, uh, at one point, a freelance uh, uh, videographer. Um, uh, more writing. Uh, more writing. Okay. I did... Um, um, uh, radio shows and uh, freelance writing for ESPN Louisville. So oh, a, as a happenstance, there, there was a big lead into that. I never anticipated doing that in my life, but uh, it ended up happening that way. Okay. Well, yeah, talk a little bit more about your experience and kind of what brought you to, uh, to Frankfurt before we talk about the flag. Well, uh, I came from eastern Kentucky. I actually grew up in the Red River Gorge uh, oh, cool. in Powell County. So yeah. that's where I spent my childhood. Um, you know, it's tough in Frankfurt because uh, you, you talk about U of L and half's going to hate you. You talk about UK and the other half's going to hate <laughs> yeah, you. No. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> but I spent a lot of my time because my brother and sister went to UK. I, I spent a lot of time in Lexington growing up. Yeah. And when I was getting ready to go to college, I said, uh, "Yeah, I, you know, I love Lexington, but I want something different." So I said, "I'm going to go to U of L. I'm going to be the different one in the family." I like so that. Uh, went to U of L, uh, met my now wife. We yeah. stayed there for 20 years. Um, so, uh, before I get to how we got to Frankfurt, I will say that the, the teaser to that is I had a randomly assigned freshman year roommate. Like I didn't know anybody in Louisville Uh, and my random, uh, assigned roommate was a pole vaulter for the track team (laughs) who happened to have been a pole vaulter at Western Hills and he's now your city planner. (laughs) So Eric Cockley, Cockley. Eric Cockley was my (sighs) randomly assigned freshman year roommate. It is such a small world. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, And so that's how I initially started to become familiar with Frankfurt. Yeah. Uh, But my wife and I stayed in Louisville for 20 years and and just always avocations are more important to me than my vocation. Like I have a great job and it pays me, but I, I work at my job so that I can then go and do things outside of that job. Yeah. Um, and so uh, are you guys familiar with Louisville City FC, the soccer team? Of yes, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I just started going to those games. I'm not really like I, I don't follow soccer except for maybe World Cup. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I... Uh, I was like, yeah, that looks like fun. So I went to a game. I was like, well, this is kind of fun. Yeah. And there's an organization called the Coopers, which right. actually oh, helped right. get the team off they the ground. They did, yeah. Right? And then they, they kind um, of initiated some of the design elements. And exactly. Like the and and then, I remember that. Just funnily enough, one of the founders that really got things going married uh, a girl that I graduated from high school with. So again, a small world situation. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, hey, you know, come on in. And I um, joined that group. And then after a few months, they were like, you know, there's an open board position. You should be on the board. And I was like, wow, sure. Sounds good. (laughs) Great. And then six months later, the then president, who was a retired colonel from the U.S. Army, he's like, you're like, you know what you're doing. You should be the president. And I was like, you know that I don't like soccer, right? (laughs) And he's like, that's probably why you're the best president. (laughs) So I ended up being president of the, the Coopers for two years and, um, like, I, I try to be, I, I am a humble, like, I'm usually the guy that's like, no, 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 not a big deal. Yeah. But one of the things that I'm like, no, I should probably put that in my cap as a feather is the the stadium, Lynn Family Stadium. Yeah. I, I played a key role in getting that constructed. Really? So, uh, I'm very yeah, proud of that fact. Yeah, hats off to you. Yeah, that, I appreciate it. beautiful stadium. Yeah, that was a big accomplishment, and I felt uh, really good about bringing that to the city. Uh, but as a result, when I was done with that, yeah. um, I had made some friends um, and they said, oh, you know, if you're not doing that soccer stuff anymore, mm-hmm. I could use somebody to cover U of L women's basketball and help me cover football. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, sounds good. So for three <laughs> years, I was a freelance journalist for ESPN Louisville covering U of L women's basketball, which was a very fulfilling experience mm-hmm. and also football. Uh, there's a gentleman, um, named Mark Blankenbaker from Louisville. Yeah. Uh, but some people around here may know him cause he's a, um, marketing rep for liquor barn actually, like all of the liquor oh, barns. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, nice guy, but did that. And then, uh, as happened to many of us, COVID came and we all got locked in the house for uh, a little while. And my wife is, uh, an engineer for the environmental cabinet. And Mm -hmm. she had, of course, transitioned to working at home just like everybody else. I was given the option uh, to work at home full time. I said, yes, I would like to work at home full time. (laughs) I will take that, yes. Uh, But then, um, you know, a few years ago, the state workers got brought back into the office. And suddenly she had to commute 45 minutes a day. 
every day again, or uh, every other day rather. Mm-hmm. And uh, both of us said, I can work at home. Mm-hmm. You have to drive to Frankfurt. Having become familiar with Frankfurt through my connections, mm-hmm. we love Frankfurt already. We come here f- quite frequently. It's like, no brainer. Let's just move to Frankfurt. Perfect. Uh, and as usual, once I move somewhere, I you know either get bored or I'm like, hey, that would be interesting. And then yeah. I, I, I can't, um, you know, <laughs> idle hands are not my, my thing. So I said, let's make a flag. <laughs> so. I love that. So what, um, I, I'm, I'm guessing you saw our, uh, our current flag uh, what, when did, do you remember what that moment was or where you saw it for the first time? And then kind of, you got the idea to like, you know what, we kind of need a new flag. Uh, you know, not to give away too much, of course, but, uh, um, you know, I'm a Kentuckian. I, I enjoy, uh, some bourbon every now and then. So, you know, in the evening, just kind of relaxing, drinking a you know, glass of bourbon. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I wonder if Frankfurt has a flag because uh, so I'll, I'll throw out this word that is the fun word vexillology. Yes. So vexillology is the study of flag design. So I'm I am not a licensed vexillologist <laughs> by any standard, yeah. but I am definitely an amateur vexillologist. And uh, I said I wonder if Frankfurt has a flag. Mm-hmm. And there is basically the Wikipedia of flags. It's called Flags of the World, mm-hmm. uh, and. I went to the website and I said, ooh, you know, now, <laughs> now the thing was the image on the Flags of the World website was a very old, low resolution image. Yeah, like a thumbnail size. Yeah. And I, I do remember looking it up some years ago. Right. And, and, and it was yeah. because nobody had actually seen, a, you know, true image of the flag before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that it gave me a visceral reaction where I said, no, I don't <laughs> like that at all. Um, but then when I saw the real flag, once I found out more about it and I was like, okay, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Right. Yeah. But when we look at successful flags, when we look at things that make flags um, adoptable or easily adaptable to multiple uses, uh, the North American Vexillological, Vexillological Association, see, even I can't say it all the time, mm-hmm. um, has done a lot of studies, you know, subjective, um, uh, some subjective, but mostly uh, objective, where they say, these are the things that make flags successful. These are the design elements that work. These are the ones that don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I said, well, our flag could use a punch up in other words and tom i think we have a there there it, there is. it is yes that is the current flag so i'll describe <laughs> it very briefly uh, up in the upper left hand corner you've got daniel boone on the right you've got uh, a boy scout okay because fun fact uh the boy scouts in the united states of america were officially organized in 1910 mm-hmm. uh the boy scouts period uh lord baden powell in, in great britain uh that was 1908 So in 1908, uh, a lot of people around the United States heard about the scouting movement and started forming their own like little independent groups. Mm -hmm. And Frankfurt formed the first, definitely the first in Kentucky, possibly one of the first three to five in the United States. Okay. So one of the first scouting troops. So Frankfurt Troop 1 is one of the first scouting troops in the United States period and predates the Boy Scouts of America, who incorporated in 1910. Uh, you've got line drawings on the north and south of the old capital and the new capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, the river, mm-hmm. as most folks who look at a map know that the river makes a slight S curve as it goes mm-hmm. through downtown. Yeah. And then it has, of course, Frankfort, Kentucky, 1786, which is our founding date. Uh, on the left, uh, within the seal, is a slightly gray star. And on the right is a blue star. And that represents the fact that during the Civil War, both the Confederacy okay. and the Union occupied the city. I feel like I have seen that flag uh, not a ton, because like like we've mentioned, it's not it's not fl- flying in a ton of places, right? Only a couple of spots here in town, and it sits behind um, uh, the the city hall and uh, inside there. I had never realized that so you just said that the that star. the different colors of the star, yeah, right, and the stars, and, and then that, also it seems like uh, just from my own taste and what I'm seeing, like the bottom left and bottom right, is just Seems a so lot empty. of empty yeah. space. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's not a lot going on. Not uh, bad, so. The stars you won't notice, especially even on the ones that fly. So currently there's only three places That's in right. town that you can see it with your own eyeballs. 
Uh, one is outside of the safety center on Second Street, the the police you know police center. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only place it flies outside. Yeah. Uh, indoors, as you mentioned, if you watch the city commission meetings on um, mm -hmm. FPB, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. cable, 10. Um, yeah. cable ten, you can see it behind the city commissioners. Of course, it's not outside, so it's draped. You know. Yeah. Uh, and then in the Russ Hatter Library at the Capitol Museum, those are the only three places you can see it. But because of production methods. Uh, on most of the production flags, both of the stars are the same color blue as the river. So you wouldn't uh, actually notice the uh, original yeah, design. If you go to, it's like Frankfurt Title Title 11, ch chapter, or chapter 11, Title 3, I think is the actual city ordinance that makes the flag. Yeah. And you can see the description in there mm -hmm. where it tells you what everything means. Well, if you're doing screen printing, you'd have to pay an extra whatever just for that one little gray star. <laughs> and that is one of the reasons why <laughs> NAVA says you should have certain design elements in your flags, is production costs are oh, a factor. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, really interesting stuff. And, uh, you know, you, you see that, and I think we all agree it could, you know, get it spruced use a up. Touch up. But there are elements that could be used, you know, and, and uh, so I, I'm sure that's where, like, you know, when uh, you kind of where you go from there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so one thing that I think is important to, to keep in mind is that uh, this is this is sort of a, a fully citizen-run uh, committee initiative. It's not... It's not something that the city has put out there and created, right? That you've you just had the idea and the thought and put together a committee and um, and and you guys are not using any kind of tax dollars, right? That's one hundred percent correct, and that's very important because you know even I, as a person who sat down and said, "Hey, we should do a new flag," I said there are a lot of people who are correctly going to say there are a lot more important things going on right now. And those important things are, they're the responsibility of all of us, yeah. but the city commission is literally, their, sure. it's their job to oversee those types of things. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to burden them with saying, you need to divert resources <laughs> right. Right. to making a flag. <laughs> yeah. Now, what I've done is I've gone before the city commission and said, hey, FYI, like Give I want to yeah, keep them aware so that nothing catches them off guard mm -hmm. and they don't get you know blindsided, say, we got a new flag, you mm -hmm. know, nothing like that. But no. Absolutely no tax dollars are being used on this. Uh, we do have costs, like printing costs, things like that. Like I got to print flyers. I got to print out templates and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, but very fortunately, uh, Steve Brooks and the board of directors over at the Capital City Museum, uh, so they oversee a nonprofit that's also not directly affiliated with the city. Mm -hmm. It's a separate nonprofit that just helps fund the Capital City Museum. Uh, they said, we'll adopt you as kind of our partner and so they're our fiduciary partner. So all donations that we're taking will go through the Capital City uh, Museum nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And whatever money we don't use will just automatically go to the Capital City oh, yeah. Museum. But again, at no point are we planning on going to the city and saying, please help us with right. this money. Yeah. And the Capital City Museum, a few places would be a, a better partner than, than the folks oh, there. Absolutely. Dr. Ellie, we've, we've, we've had her on the show several times before. And yeah. Uh, just an awesome partner here in our town. Um, uh, we're uh, before we kind of step aside. We got a we got a weather bit from uh, Dylan Goday, but uh, I do want to ask you who else sits on the um, committee. So we have two um, high school students uh, mm -hmm. from Franklin County: uh, Elizabeth Pulliam and Sophie Emberton. Uh, Natalie Goshiri works for the Education Cabinet. Um, she is a um, she has her master's in history and, and is an education or educator. Uh, Risa Yost, who does a lot of uh, nonprofit work around town, she's an artist and art historian. Uh, Zach Smith is actually the social media coordinator for the Capital City Museum, and he is our official quote unquote liaison to the Capital City Museum. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jim Seaver is uh, uh, he's actually the coordinator for the roadside markers you see, like the state history roadside markers. Yeah. He's the coordinator for that program. He works for the Kentucky Historical Society. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Tiffany Seppenfield uh, is uh, the owner of Porter's and own, does a, there's not a lot Tiffany doesn't do, no, but yeah. Uh, yeah. she is uh, a wonderful friend and, and helping out with us there. So, And they've done uh, good design work there at, at, at their actual Porter's business. And yeah, it's a great place. Um, and you mentioned a couple of high school uh, students involved as well. I think that's that's such a cool idea to have uh, some like kids in our community kind of get involved there too. It's going to be their flag longer <laughs> than it is my flag, so it's important that they have a chance to participate. Yeah, absolutely. 
Should we check in on weather? I think we should. Uh, I need to know what this week looks like. Uh, we're going to come back and talk more with Tom. But, um, yeah, let's let's see what uh, Dylan Godet and Storm Team 36 have in store for us this week. Good morning to our friends in Franklin County. Thank you for, for turning uh, tuning in for uh, round 10. I'm ABC 36 Storm Team Meteorologist Dylan Godet. If I can speak on this Monday morning, maybe it's because of how cold it is out there. Temperatures this morning as cold as the upper 20s and low 30s. It's going to get even colder by tomorrow morning and not really improve at all this afternoon, only reaching the low to mid 40s. We are tracking some pleasant conditions through the middle of the week, mainly dry for your Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and temperature increase by Wednesday. We'll be into the upper 50s. We'll be tracking some rain chances returning, though, by the time Friday rolls around. Nothing too heavy, but some rain nonetheless after we're dry through the middle of the week. So for your day today, mix of the sun and clouds, we will see a chance to our east, well to our east, of seeing maybe a flurry or two. Most areas, though, will be staying dry, um, just a little chilly out there, only reaching the low 40s. Tomorrow morning, going to start off the day into the mid to upper 20s, colder into the valleys. I wouldn't be surprised to see even here in Frankfurt falling into the low 20s to begin the day. Just depends on if we see that southwesterly breeze or not. We will see that southwesterly wind by tomorrow afternoon. Should reach the low to mid 50s pretty easily on Tuesday. Wednesday morning, not quite as cold into the low 20s. 40s and upper 30s uh, to begin the day. Today, though, partly cloudy and chilly, low 40s for high temperatures. A few flakes possible, that's mainly to our east, though. Tonight, we are going to fall into the mid 20s. Skies clearing. With those skies clearing, temperatures will be dropping mid 20s to begin the day on Tuesday. Again, low 20s could even be possible. Your Wednesday, that's our go day. A little breezy, upper 50s with some rain chances returning by the time Friday rolls around. Uh, down a little bit, but a, a breezy go day on Wednesday, it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a little, little tick down on the temperatures, but still spring like. Mm -hmm. We're yeah, good. Yeah, We're yeah. good. Um, Zach, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk more flags. How yeah, about yeah. We, um, you know, we, we talked about the, the fact that our current flag isn't flying in a ton of places, and so I think people would would probably be maybe forgiven if they don't know that Frankfurt currently has a flag but um it, you know there, there's some 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 guidance right some some guidelines that that people like to to put out there and um remind folks about what makes good flag design, yeah what makes a good right? what makes a good flag good uh, yeah yeah so why don't we talk about that a little bit absolutely uh one of the key things to think about at any point is what is a flag supposed to be yes like what is a flag for uh, somewhere along the lines, we as a society decided that flags and logos had more in common than they should. Uh, we, we think of it as an image that you can put on a wall or put on a web page and things like that. And that's a natural consequence of the advancement of our society. But when you think about what is a flag supposed to be, it is a piece of fabric that flaps in the wind <laughs> that you can see from great distances. Yeah. And you can also recognize it. Mm -hmm. So think way back thousands of years, what were flags used for? I'm on one side of the battlefield and the other guy's on the other side of the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I need to look up from wherever I am on that battlefield <laughs> amid smoke, dust, I don't know what, and say, that's where I'm supposed to go and that's where I'm not supposed to go. <laughs> and so obviously being able to recognize a flag from a great distance is a key. So think of the American flag. Uh, the entire national anthem is based on the fact that Francis Scott Key could look out of a porthole in a ship in the harbor and say, I can still see that that is the American flag <laughs> flying over Fort McHenry, yeah. and that is definitely the American flag. That's um, so that's the idea behind a flag. So... When you have a flag that has tiny little details or small line drawings mm -hmm. or itty bitty stars that may be slightly the, you know, different <laughs> colors, just color, differentiated, yeah. Uh, yeah. then as you get farther and farther away, you're going to start squinting and being like, well, what is that? Mm -hmm. you know, I think it kind of looks like that. Or is that supposed to be? Uh, and that just doesn't make for a great flag. And it makes it for a flag that a lot of people are like, well, why would I fly that from a flagpole? Because I'm not going to be able to see that, right? And so... And maybe that's why it's only 
our current flag is only flying in a couple. Yeah, of- I, you know, perhaps over the past 65 years, a lot of folks have said, well, I mean, you know, sure, we got a flag, but <laughs> it looks good behind the city commission, and yeah, that, right. that's all we need, right? Mm-hmm. People like me say, no, a flag deserves to be flown from a flagpole. That is what flags are for. And I want to see it on a flagpole uh, all around town, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And so the other aspect of that, though, is you're supposed to be able to tell flags apart. So if you have a flag that looks a lot like other flags, then you're also defeating the purpose. Mm -hmm. And so in in the vexillology community, it's called seal on a bed sheet. So take a white sheet and slap the city seal on it. And you're done. Mm-hmm. And no, because every other city has done that. Yeah. And so now your flag looks like every other city's flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I'm pictured in my head right now what the city of Frankfurt seal is like. And it's government. It, <laughs> yeah. it serves its purpose, yeah. right? You know what it is, but I just couldn't imagine it sitting on a, a white bed sheet or something and just, <laughs> just yeah. popping it on a flag. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's talk about you know using some of those uh, those design elements. Uh, you're encouraging folks to make submissions. Absolutely, uh, that's the key. And a lot of people, um, I, w- I will say this is anecdotal, of course. Uh, most of the people I talk to, even many who have lived here their whole life, say I didn't even know we had a flag. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, and that's uh, I consider that a point in my favor. I'm like, if you didn't know we had a flag, then functionally we don't have a flag, yep. right? Let's actually get a flag. Yeah. Uh, and then they say, well, what's it going to look like? And I, uh, I'm a snarky kind of guy. So I'm like, I have no idea. And the thing <laughs> is, I'm telling the truth. It's like, I have no idea what yeah. the new flag is going to look like because it would be wrong for one person or even seven people mm-hmm. to decide what everybody else's flag is going to look like. Mm-hmm. So we're taking public submissions through May 4th. It's running right now. You can go to the website, frankfurtflag.org. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, it's very obvious how to do so. There's instructions, templates, guidance, things along those lines. But the people of Frankfurt get to decide uh, what the next flag of Frankfurt look like. It looks like. Now, I will say that this is the year 2024, and it's the Internet, mm-hmm. and there can be a lot of things that go wrong when you have public competitions. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. And as such, that's why we have the seven-person committee. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm the chairperson. I'm not a voting member. I'm just kind of like... You know, the guy, the guidance, the Mm -hmm. leader trying to do things like this, get the word out, freeing them, those very wonderful seven people to be the curators is probably the right word. Mm -hmm. So they're going to take all those designs, judge them based on good flag design standards, and they'll eventually get it down to smaller and smaller numbers until they say, that's the one. And that's the one we'll take to the city commission. (laughs) Uh, so let me throw a, a curveball at you, uh, question. Let's say an eight year old submits a, a design and it's all the bones are there. Like we love where he went with this. The execution is off. Like, you know, it's not, it's not a finished product, but we really like the, the bones of like, you know, the idea here, then, then kind of where do you go from there? And, and some people may not like this, but it's absolutely necessary. Uh, when you have a city flag or a state flag, or a national flag. That flag belongs to the people. Um, And as something that belongs to the people, that means that once you submit something to my design initiative, it now belongs to everybody and nobody at the same time. So I encourage every eight-year-old, every kindergartner, (laughs) I I don't care what age you are, uh, how you identify, anything along those lines, please submit flag designs because When you crowdsource, the more ideas you get, the better you get. So once we receive those designs, just as you said, if we look at it and we're like, the concept is there, Mm -hmm. but it was drawn in crayon by an (laughs) eight-year-old. Well, that no longer matters because I have the uh, right to take that Mm -hmm. and basically run it through a punch-up and say, Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take this element right here tweak it a little bit. Mm. I'm maybe going to rotate that this way. Mm. I'm going to make that wider. I have the right to do those things. Now, the core of that flag still is there. So I still get to say that, uh, you know, Sally, age eight, who goes to Collins Lane or whatever, that's still her flag. It's just that Tom 
worked with the national organization who are professionals, and they, <laughs> they can say, hey, if you tweak that or change that, yeah. then uh, you're good to go. So, so there, will, there will be a little bit of limits to the latitude that the committee takes. So they're not going to take Sally, eight-year-olds, and Jim, the 40-year-olds, and you know, I like this from him, and I like this from her, and we're going to, or maybe that, is that on the table? That's on the table. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because we don't want to rule anything out. Okay. Because somebody may have a flag that has uh, one simple design on it. And we're like, that's that just doesn't tell mm -hmm. the totality of the history of Frankfurt or, or explain Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. But this other flag has something that is a really great addition to that. And yeah, we're absolutely free to do those things. That's the purpose of the committee. Yeah. Uh, and, and so <clears throat> that's the key to understand is just as I have said, it shouldn't be me designing mm -hmm. the flag of Frankfurt. It doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be one individual. It's right. a community effort. So I would say that if, if there's anybody out there that's thinking about uh, submitting to this, then mm -hmm. with that in mind, don't be precious about it. Don't be like my design has to oh, win right. and leave yeah, it alone. You changed it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then also, but don't, don't get discouraged. Right. Exactly. Because, you know, maybe you're worried that it needs to fit these certain dimensions for sure yeah. and fit on this thing because, because you all will massage it. And, and like yeah. you said, you're there to help right. with the actual guidelines and what is and, needed. And if you submit, you're a part of the process, whether oh, any, even yeah. if, if none of your thing gets incorporated, you're part, you're informing this decision process by the committee. They're seeing it. They're like, it, it just kind of gets all incorporated yeah. in some way, somehow in the final product, you will be a part of it because you were part of this process and the thought process of, 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 you know, boiling it down. And we're going to work with the individuals who do submit. And it's not like we're going to just going to <laughs> toss it into right, a box right. and be like, I changed it. You can't right. do anything yeah, about yeah. that. Uh, it'll be my job to reach out to the yeah. person and say, Hey, mm -hmm. you did a wonderful job, but yeah if we change this and change this and for them, it's actually a benefit because I'm reaching out to them and helping them cheat. Essentially. It's like, uh, if yeah, you change uh, this and this, yeah. then you're going to have a ch better chance of your flag being right. one that gets yeah. picked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, yes, I don't want anyone to feel like, um, it has to be their flag because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's going to be our flag. It's and that's Frankfurt. the most important yeah. thing. Just yeah. feel like Frankfurt needs to win more than I need to win. A that's bit. exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And so folks can do submissions. They can put those online at frankfurtflag.org, but also um, they can mail them right to the Capital City Museum. Uh, there was a key study in Minneapolis. They tried to do this exact same thing, yeah. and they got all the way to the city commission stage, and the city commission shot them down because they said all you did was do online submissions. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, it is the year 2024, <laughs> but not everybody is fortunate true. enough like, to true. have like access the, the, or the graphic eight, design software. Yeah, yeah. the eight-year-old who designed something on a yeah. you know piece of Crayons, scratch paper right, at yeah. school uh -huh. or something, they can, they can mail that in, or uh, uh, you guys will have drop boxes. Too. There's going to be drop boxes, which I'm in the process of dropping off. Currently, there are drop boxes at the uh, Paul Sawyer Library and at the Capital City Museum. Uh, you can download a template. You can mail it to the Capital City Museum. Mm -hmm. So Frankfurt Flag Initiative, care of Capital, C or Capital City Museum yeah. at 325 Ann Street. Uh, and then, you know, as you said, uh, I'll be putting out more drop boxes. The high schools will have drop boxes for the students there. If the middle schools and elementary schools are interested, I can, of course, get in touch with them. I'm working with the school systems. Uh, but Yes Arts, I'm going to drop one off at Yes Arts today. Mm -hmm. So places like that. Just keep you know keep your eyes peeled, basically, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll try to get more drop boxes around town. Yeah, and I've seen a few uh, signs kind of around town with the QR code, I think, that takes you to, to frankfurtflag.org. But, Tom... Thanks for hanging out, yeah. man. I, uh, so much of what you were saying about your own background, your experience, I'm like, that's a sidebar. That's a sidebar. <laughs> so we need, we need to have you back here uh, oh, anytime. before too long. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Zach's ears were perking up over there as soon oh as, the, as, soon as <laughs> the Coopers got <laughs> brought up. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Louisville City <laughs> FC. And I was like, oh, I know Eric Copley. Yeah. Like, I, there's uh, so much, yeah. Uh, I don't like being bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of pots, uh, right. a, lot of, a lot of plates spinning. Yeah, thanks so much for, for hanging out with us and giving us all that great information about the flag in initiative. And we'll no definitely problem. have you back. Yeah, I hope to come back, especially to give folks tips and tricks about submit, submitting. Oh, absolutely. Good deal. Uh, next, we're going to check in with our uh, some answers from the question of the yeah. day. And uh, we got community calendar go, go, coming up and lots of more uh, right after this. In today's fast-paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. 
Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. Meet Jeff and Abby, your compass in the new age of advertising. Your guide on the trail to new business. Because these days, you need a guide. Your customers are spread out everywhere. And you need to be able to reach them anywhere. On the internet, on cable, on streaming services. Wherever they are, we are. Let Jeff and Abby make the perfect custom plan for your business and your budget. FPB Advertising, we're everywhere. Contact us and talk to Jeff or Abby today. And we're back. Uh, Zach, what are people saying out there about... Uh, Let me scroll back up. Um, let's see. Papa says I'd fight an emu, maybe. An emu, okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Crystal, uh, she was she was letting Stephanie know that we were talking about a cougar earlier. Um, and then uh, Lena, we were talking about the, the basketball bracket challenge. She said uh, never. She's never won any of these, and not, not in basketball. But she did win a derby pool once, though. Okay. Uh, just drawing a name is so much easier, right? You just you, you drew the names like you really yeah, have to yeah, think about yeah, it. Right. But even with the horses, right? There's a you just never know with mm -hmm. some of that. It's more like chance anymore with with horse racing sometimes and where they're located. But yeah, you know. um, uh, Papa says he's remarkably bad at picking uh, winners for brackets. Um, and Crystal says she tends to choose teams based on colors or mascots, so she hasn't really won any challenges like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, David says that he would fight a cougar for his Thai smile. Always back. Yeah. The, always back. All roads lead to oh, Thai smile. Man, if that's what you got to do. Um, and then last year, Leslie says, uh, I would fight a goat and maybe a mini cow. <laughs> <laughs> and she picks her teams based on mascot. And so, yeah, she says she's never, never won a okay. bracket. All yeah. right. Um, that might be a good, a, a different, different show question of the day because we're running out of time. But um, it, uh, to what, <laughs> what mascot would you fight yeah. in the in the NCAA tournament? Yeah. Or if if the if the games were played based on the mascots, <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. like who would win? You know? Yeah. Um, would you feel good about fighting Big Red from Western, or 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 would you be scared? Because uh, I can't, you know, I, I can't get a beat on Big Red. Uh, I would feel terrified if I was <laughs> yeah. if I were like a Matt, if I was just uh -huh. like the Tennessee or the Commodore or who, who you know yeah. whoever Boilermaker or somebody, and like here I am standing in this Big Red, like I have no idea what he's gonna throw at <laughs> right, me. Like, yeah. He could he's just wild, all of a sudden like oh, he has a flamethrower yeah. for some reason yeah. in his, or he just has a bunch of cans of big red that he throws yeah. at you Ooh. and and maybe the way i should have phrased the 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 animal question is the largest animal that you think you have a chance to to win against <laughs> like that would have been another way to put it oh yeah I, sure. I, I, that's where i'm like I, again scared to death to fight a cougar but mm -hmm. maybe like you know because they're not huge but yeah okay <laughs> uh, but last last response kathy Lindsay got hers in just in time she says i she's won the ncaa brackets twice wow the uk won the whole thing both times okay so i'm guessing what 96 98 maybe she did that or, or, or 2012. 2012 yeah yeah, uh -huh. yeah. uh so, good for you all right everybody uh let's let's open up the community calendar Zach, we got some easy Tai Chi, um, not the difficult Tai Chi. No. <laughs> uh, Monday, today, 1.15 to 2 p.m. at Fit Time for Women uh, on Brighton Park Boulevard. Yeah, learn the basics of Tai Chi, uh, starting with the, the infinite nine form. Ooh. I'm actually uh, really glad that you read this one because there's a 50-50 chance I would have said chai tea instead. And <laughs> yeah, I do well, love good chai tea. Yeah, you can't, can't switch them up there. Can't switch them up. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, Book Babies is going on at the library. Uh, it's, it's happening like now, like soon, in the next like 45 minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they have stories and songs, rhymes uh, designed especially for youngest patrons, 0 to 23 months, uh, and, their, uh, and their parents and caregivers. No registration is required. Uh, let's talk about it at the library in the community room. Uh, let's talk about it is the joint focus on race relations uh, and the library's community discussion of race-related issues here in Frankfurt, and, mm -hmm. and no registration necessary for that one. Yeah. 
And then also at the library, this is going on tonight at 6 o'clock, is the After the Flood film screening uh, at the beautiful River Room in the library. It's an exclusive screening of After the Flood, a documentary short centering Kentuckys, uh, centering around Kentuckians of color and their allies who came together in the wake of historic flooding in eastern Kentucky. So good, check that out tonight. Good deal. I think I missed that. Uh, let's talk about it is tonight from 530 to 7 p.m. Oh, I'm okay. not sure that I said that. So. A lot uh, going on at the library tonight. Yeah, uh, all ways yeah um all right uh, let's uh, well the last, we got one more event just yeah. real quick uh that because we, we've we've uh -huh. uh, talked about this a few times and we had the the judge on to talk about the easter yeah. egg hunt yeah it's actually coming up this weekend um uh franklin county fiscal court holds fifth annual easter egg hunt at lakeview park this weekend a uh, free event of course where about fifteen thousand eggs will be hidden uh, i think maybe the judge will be out there helping them hide mm -hmm. them is that what he said when we had him on i think so i think so <laughs> Uh, there will also be light refreshments with the proceeds going to Frankfurt High School Athletics, and they do want folks to uh, – parents to register and their their children in the correct age category, and you can do that at franklincounty.ky.gov. Um, and that's just so uh, – you know, all the kiddos can get the – can get all the eggs they want. You don't have – 10 year olds battling five year olds mm -hmm. for eggs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. get pre registered. Going well, on this weekend. We're trying to figure out what to stuff eggs with right now for, for our kids' daycare uh, oh, to yeah. take out what we're going to send out there. Yeah. You can't just put loose uh, jelly beans in, you know? <laughs> No, yeah, you got to you got to think about it a little yeah, bit. You don't you don't want to swamp a, a, people with candy. Like I mean, every like you know, we had Christmas and it was Valentine's mm -hmm. Day, and like we just have we're so inundated with candy, and she mm -hmm. wants to eat all of it, and it's like, <laughs> and I have to keep throwing all this candy away. She's a monster. Uh, <laughs> let's go to. Uh, we have we do have a video. Yeah, in the first installment of uh, an app for that. Um, the Paul Public Library a digital services specialist Dalton Bennett goes over everything you can access in the Hoopla app for the low, low price of your library card. So let's take a look at that. Hello and welcome to An App for That, the show dedicated to finding the perfect mobile app for practically any need. My name is Dalton and this month we're talking books. With National Library Week right around the corner, it's the perfect time to get involved with your local library. Thankfully, I have an app in mind that allows you to interact with the library from the comfort of your home. Let's take a look. Hoopla is a comprehensive digital media service that provides practically any form of entertainment. It seamlessly allows its users to browse a vast collection of digital content, such as blockbuster movies, chart-topping music, captivating magazines, and more. But most importantly, Hoopla's ebook and audiobook collection contain bestsellers, timeless classics, and new releases that cover practically any genre. Whether you're a bookworm, a movie buff, or a music lover, Hoopla has something for everybody. And best of all, there are no wait lists, late fees, and it's completely free with your library card. So why wait? Take advantage of Hoopla today and begin your next literary adventure. For assistance on how to access Hoopla or how to sign up for your very own library card, I encourage you to call the Paul Sawyer Public Library at 502-352-2665. That is all for this month's segment of An App For That. Tune in for next month as we discover yet again another app that can revolutionize your digital life. Until then, I'll see you later. Well, I see some comics there at the end. <laughs> uh, yeah, for more information, you can visit PSPL.org at any time. I'm going yeah. to gonna have to talk to Dalton about my eyebrow game. No, so like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. getting self-conscious looking at his <laughs> finely uh, contoured. Like, uh, like, I feel like mine yeah. are just all over the place. <laughs> I'm excited to see more uh, segments on this, though. I think mean, this yeah. is great. And Dalton does uh, got confirmation while we were watching the video that he does the tech cafes at the library uh -huh. that I'm always like gushing yeah. about whenever yeah. they do them. And I think that's just such, such an awesome idea. Um, Zach, can you tell me what's coming up on Cable 10? Yeah. All right, tonight uh, I have a couple of re-airings of meetings from last week, City Commission work session um, from March 11th last Monday, and then 745 is a long planning commission meeting from Thursday night that Papa covered for us. And then Tuesday, 5 o'clock, will be a live FPB Board of Directors regular meeting. And just a reminder, that'll be on Cable 10 at 5, but also streaming on the FPB's Facebook page and Cable 10 YouTube channel. Uh, right on. Let's heat things up with some hot topics. Let's do it.
Wilma is watching. Uh, let's sit high on the text machine. So good morning, Wilma. Wilma, you got to tell us. You got to tell us some things. You always say hi, but we need to know like what animals you want to fight and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, Wilma, who are you getting in the octagon with? That's right. <laughs> who you want to square up against? Like, let us know. Um, let's talk about Trader Joe's, uh, Zach. Yeah. Move over, Stanley Cups. There's a new unnecessarily expensive doodad in town. <laughs> Apparently an unassuming canvas mini tote from Trader Joe's of all places. What? That's a nice tote, though. It's a real. hot commodity. The What? That is a nice looking tote. I, I care more about that than I do the Stanley Cup. <laughs> it looks like every other free tote I've ever seen. Yeah, sure. Uh, the three dollar tote, which has neither function nor style, <laughs> began causing a stir on social media a few days ago, and opportunistic resellers are re- are seizing on the hype. Uh, the mini totes are offered in four colors: blue, green, red, and yellow, and they are all in high demand. <laughs> Uh, the bags retailing at three two ninety nine are now advertised on platforms like eBay and Facebook Stop. Marketplace. Stop that! <laughs> For many times their original price. No, uh, people are out of their minds. For offers from third party sellers range significantly, but as of today, listings span from twenty dollars for a single tote to as high as nine hundred and ninety nine dollars for the complete uh, set. You got to have them all. Listen, I love I love the idea of it. I'm I'm into that design. But people's brains are cooked. Yeah. We are cooked right now. If you're spending a th- potentially a thousand dollars for a set of four, at what are, um, do we even mention like the size dimensions? It's a mini tote. It is tiny. Like, what can you put in there? Right. Yeah. I mean, to, to me, that's like a little beach bag. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, there's no discernible reason these must have totes are must have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we wouldn't be surprised if anyone who has paid hundreds of dollars for one of these doesn't regret <laughs> it within a, a roughly a month's time. I'm going to say much shorter amount. Like I'm saying within like the 10 se- seconds. Yeah. What have I done? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As soon as eBay says, no, you can't, you can't take it back. Then, and then you're like, Oh no. But like what? I just don't understand. It's like, what does Kroger have to do? Like other grocery stores, other places, like I'm sure you can get little mini totes or, ones that are so much bigger than that for like half that (laughs) price it's like a dollar fifty it's i don't know yeah it's gotta be there i think you can probably as with most things like this trace it back to a random tiktok that has like influencers right million views and people are going bananas over it but like kendall jenner had right or something all they need is the right person beast or Uh i sound older and older the more i speak (laughs) about it we're, our brains are cooked if people are spending yeah. this much for a mini tote. That's right. I do love it, though. I think it's cool, but I don't uh, – yeah. not that price. Good Lord. Uh, I, I, I may or may not have paid 80 bucks for an empty box of a Roadhouse DVD the other day, so don't tell my wife that. But <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Was it on purpose, empty? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> like, I mean, you know, know. – uh, the art was better on that box, Zach. <laughs> and you had the disc from that other one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do uh, you want to tell me about Chuck E. Cheese? Or, or? I, we do not have time, I don't think. Okay, all right. I, all right. Yeah, Let's this, it. it seems kind of long. I'm, I'm and excited I do wanna, about it. I do want to, like... Give it its justice, give, right? Yeah, give maybe yeah. Wednesday they can get it. Good deal. I agree. Um, but don't forget to follow us on Facebook. Uh, do that. Search for Cable 10. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can get lots of archive programming there. Uh, Be notified if you want. Hit the notifications if you want to know when we go live or add new programs. If you have any questions, comments, or you want to share your community event, you can contact us at cable10 at fewpb.com or use the text machine by texting 502-353-0233. Take advantage of that. If you want us to talk about something on the show, something you really hope we mention, Mm -hmm. um, hit us on the text machine, uh, you know, 8 or 9 a.m. and and tell us. Yeah. Um, Yeah, or you have, like, a question about something around town, like, we can. We have resources. Right. We can get to the bottom of it. We can dig in. We know people. Uh, we'll set Pawpaw loose. Uh, yeah. Un- I, unleash Pawpaw. Un- unleash him in Cut the him octagon loose. and yeah. of, of our daily lives, you know. Yeah. Find, Invest- down information. We have an investigative journalist on staff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and if you love our show, hit this QR code right now and mm-hmm. leave us a Google review. Get five, five big stars uh, for us. Mm-hmm. 
And five stars for our guest today, Tom Farmer. It was really fun having him on. Uh, can't wait to bring him back on the show and talk flag design and uh, probably talk Louisville City mm -hmm. soccer and maybe Louisville basketball as well. Who knows? Yeah. Thanks to Brett and Papa and David uh, for all the work they do on the show. Um, Zach uh, Bruno Mars does a, 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 a residency at MGM. In Vegas? Yeah, and mm -hmm. and he uh, apparently uh, the rumors are that he owes the MGM at least fifty million dollars for gambling debts. <laughs> so I'm sure they love so this arrangement. Yeah, it, well, yeah, and if the if the residency was only for a month or two, it'd probably be a couple <laughs> years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, like you know, you pay him, he gives it right back to you. It works yeah, out good for MGM. Center synergy. Um, okay, everybody. Uh, remember, we'll be back on Wednesday mm -hmm. um, with Kathy and Harvey. Yep, I think so. And uh, it'll be great. It'll be a great one. Uh, remember, if it happens around town, it's on around 10. Round 10 is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. You need realtors who can help navigate the current fast-paced real estate market. So choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what they do and families are why they do it. 